Hi, how are you doing? Hope you're well and safe and having a great day. I'm having a great day. I've been messing around with colour. Should this sky be blue and the leaves on the trees green? No, of course, of course not. Let's get into the video. In Christian today, I'm not going to use any uh, add-ons like digital atelier brushes. I just want to use default tools that are available um, within Krita. This is Krita 5, the new version. So I'm going to begin with loading in a resource image. So I will use the default um, display or image source image display reference image, I guess we'd call it. Uh, available in, in Critter. So I begin by clicking on this little pin icon. Cho choose, it's usually a default set to brush presets. I'm going to choose tool options, click the plus icon. Uh, I'm already navigated to the folder with my source image in. Open that up and then I can move that across here. I'll resize it a little bit if I want. I'm not a big fan of this tool, but I'm going to use it today uh, just. Uh, just because I don't want to use any third-party tools like uh, I would normally be using pure ref um, for displaying reference images but today I'm going to use this default tool so once I've got that selected I can click back on my brush presets choose uh, brush presets I click off here actually and um, I'm going to use I'm going to do an oil painting and I'm, although I'm just using default tools, this isn't really what this video is about. This video is about um, messing about with colour, really. Um, uh, and I want to use um, some a, a little bit of colour theory to come up with something a little bit different than this uh, boring, boring image we've got uh, on the right. A uh, lot of issues with this photo. If we just we just begin by talking about those, we've got this nice sort of sun shining through the tree, but it's in the wrong place. It needs to be a little bit lower, I think. It's all right on the uh, horizontal axis, but the vertical one it needs to come down a bit, maybe into this little hole here. Uh, we've got too much space, I think, in the foreground. Although we could definitely dress that up with some shadows and things, and the colours, you know, they like pretty bog standard aren't they so I'm just going to change them around a bit I've got a uh, tab called oil painting and I've just got some standard uh, default brushes that I've popped into there and I'm going to use them today so uh, and I'm going to work I'm going to try to use a little bit of color theory as I say which I'll explain as I'm going so what I want to do first of all is just get a background color in uh, I'm going to use the roller because that's obviously going to get that in really quick for me. I'm working on an A3, uh, I think it's A3, 200 dots per inch size canvas, 8-bit um, uh, integers. So if you wanted to um, record this as you go in, you can do with that setting. And it tells me down here at the right at the right hand side, bottom of the image. Or underneath the source photo the actual canvas size that I'm working on there we go so I want to I'm, I'm thinking I, I, I want a sort of a, a warm tone that, that's quite nice for a background color and I just want to sort of whack this on uh, this roll looks a little bit sort of boxy um, I mean boxy if I zoom in around these sort of square edges um a bit pixelated perhaps just holding the space bar to move this around and uh control key and space bar to zoom in and out yeah but once i get it all covered that doesn't really matter does it sort of getting some sort of tone on there I can swap to this um I think it's charcoal charcoal rock soft brush I could probably just change that up a bit and add a little bit of texture in there if I wanted you know 
So, colour scheme wise, right, you know, skies are blue, the leaves on the trees are green, as that classic song go, goes. And the little kid says, but there's so many colours in the rainbow. Uh, and the teacher says, but the sky's blue and the leaves on the tree are green. And sort of forces the child to paint uh, in this sort of set way as everybody perceives things. And then uh, at the end of the song, the little kid's going, the, the, the sky in the blue, the, the colour of the sky is blue and the leaves on the trees are green in a really morbid, beaten down way. So, having said that, let's mix things up a bit. So I'm thinking uh, what, what I want to do is work with a, a split complementary colour scheme. So basically, if we look at this, if I sort of put my little cursor there and choose uh, this sort of pink colour, just a little mark there, a little pink mark there, oh it seemed to have changed brush, uh, how lovely, uh, and then come over here, we can sort of go with the uh, green side of the spectrum, and then we come over here and we can go Oh no, I tell you what, let's just change this for a bit. We're working with um so starting there and now split complementary, we'll put it this side. So basically a split complementary would be you choose one colour, you go the opposite side of the wheel and then go left and right of it. So we could sort of have like this sort of purpley colour and this this colour. So we could work with a palette like that, and I can and I I can sort of deviate a little bit if I want. You know, I don't want just these pinks. I might want a bit of yellowing. So sort of work within this band there, and then this band here. We've got a split complementary scheme uh, going off. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, for for color wise. So let's start with the sky and I'm thinking let's get the clouds in. I'm not going to do any drawing here. I just I just don't want to get into the drawing. Uh, I just, I'm just excited about putting this colour on. And uh, what what's this brush? The flat rough bristle brush. They are quite big. Just want to sort of I'm sort of okay. I want a bit more colour. Yeah, sort of like that. So I'm going to do a sky that's sort of this colour. That song I was uh, referencing really sort of it, it owned to me. I mean, it's a very old song and uh, I don't know if it ever got into um the charts or anything but uh I did sort of sum it up i had a really good art teacher actually when i was at school um well i did for a period he left the guy left and um started teaching uh, i went to another school uh, i came from kind of a I'll say it was a poor background, but in a city um type play, I'll put in a bit of blue in here, aren't I? Let's make it a bit grey. Um in a city school uh with not a lot of expectations from us really. But this one particular teacher was he it really did inspire me and my brother actually. We both liked him a lot. And then he left and then for the next four years, we never had a decent art teacher after that. Um, some teachers can bring out the best in you, can't they? They can really make you um, 
be inspired and other teachers make make it feel like a chore like you've got to um conform in some way uh, to to rules right when you're learning portrait painting perhaps and you have to do it a certain way i'm going to put a little bit of a fence in there um and then have my gate i'll just shrink this brush down a little bit just just to show you how, how i plan to put the gate in so it's not going off the edge of the photo really uh, and i'll probably come lots of um dark colors here as well i'm just sort of blocking in shapes at the minute as you can see we're sort of straying off the actual colors of the um photo quite radically which is you know nice it, you can't do this with photography can well you can i suppose you can certainly um change colors around a lot but uh yeah, we're painting we don't have to make it real do we it's not really what we're about uh, let's get this tree in then um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say at the minute that we're using this split complementary color scheme as a starting point to um, help you understand why I'm picking the colors that I have okay but having said that I might completely stick a random color in there um, just because I think it, it, it looks right and to be honest with you I wouldn't be able to begin to tell you um, why perhaps I uh, choose some colors and I just do it because it feels right and I guess that's just um, years of experience I suppose but it's nice to have a starting point that's what I'm saying um, See this shadow, you look at it on the ground, it was getting this sort of dappled, dappled look. By doing that. Go away. We can sort of fill in this space and make it not look so um, empty. Looking for uh, control key, color picker. The Rebel and um, Critter use different uh, options for uh, the color picker. Uh, I always have to play around with it to, to get the one I want see what I'm saying it was bringing that tree down into the foreground with the shadow mass there really it's quite I, I quite like that it's defining a little bit there let's get the tree in then um, feeling like I want to uh, I don't want to stray too far from green for some reason. Uh, is that because I've been indoctrinated and and the trees on the leaves, the leaves on the trees are green, you know. Is that what I'm trying to say to myself and forcing that as an issue? 
I don't know. This, you know, what I'm talking about now, you can apply this to any app. Um, this works in Critter, Procreate, you know, it's, it's a generic lesson or color theory, I suppose. I'm just sort of feeling these shapes as well, you know, um, chiseling out a bit. I want this, definitely want this sun. Well, I'm thinking about there might be quite a cool place to put it. There. And then bring this tree over a bit more. Uh, I've got to put these distant trees in. I'm, and I'm still sort of sticking to rules of um, the light. The light's behind the tree, so we're going to get, you know, dark. Uh, silhouette shapes. And then um, maybe a rim light around it or something like that. The light could be put in a shadow on the curb there a little bit, you know. And it could certainly be putting this fence in silhouette. As it were. Put these trees in in the background. Sticking with this one brush at the minute, just just to block in. Have you ever had been asked to do a commission and they say the color scheme of my house is or my house is predominantly purple or, or green or whatever in the in the room where i want this painting to hang that you are going to um produce for me so can you paint with a a, a purple palette <laughs> and i always go no uh, i don't know what's going to happen it, you've got to go with the flow this is why i hate doing commissions absolutely hate it this brush down here texture impression is wet it's quite nice I'm going to start mixing up the brushes a bit now um, just try and get a bit more sort of effects yeah so that's the thing I, I, I used to get that a lot when I because I, I used to do a lot of commissions but I, I don't anymore um i i avoid them like the plague uh, and i i've been known to take on commissions and um sort of watercolor or something of that nature i remember doing one of somebody's house and uh, they asked me to do and it it should have took me no more than 
you know, a week. And it took me six months. Oh, that's a blending brush, isn't it? It's not really a painting brush. It, it did. It took me six months to, to um, actually get round to doing this painting because I didn't want to do it. I just did not want to do it. Oh, this is a nice brush. I'm liking this. This blends lovely. But you know, there was expectations of, of, I don't know, painting to a norm. And yet, I don't know why, because a lot of people, you know, they know my style. They usually ask me to paint a picture because I'm painting a particular style. And uh, I, I still, I'm dragged kicking and screaming. I, I, like, I just like to paint what I want to paint, when I want to paint it. And, and that's it. That's probably not a good way to look at it. And, you know, not, um, we're going to make any money. But quite often when I was doing, uh, you know, a lot of sort of solo exhibitions and stuff like that, uh, people would come into the gallery I was in and uh, get chatting and, and uh, say, oh, that I love what your paintings, but you've not got what I want. Can you do me a commission? And I would take them on. Uh, and, uh, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I want to do that anymore. I'm liking how this is coming together, by the way. Uh, I think sometimes I'm just an arse. Stubborn. Stubborn old man. So essentially we've got sort of pink clouds, which is uh, nice, I'm liking that. I'm gonna come over here for this sort of green, let's get some light under here, under this tree. By lightening up the uh, sky, it means I don't have to make the tree that much darker. We've got this field in, haven't we? I've got, I must forget to put that field in. In actual fact, it sort of comes. This is the, oh, let's get the sky in. I'm forgetting I'm doing the sky, not the field colour. I'm feeling happy now about my trees not being um, green. Just mixing it up a bit. I'll put this sun bursting through, probably there, I think. Maybe up that side as well, a little bit. Do I want this yellow? Now this this is probably where I'm going to I'll say deviate from my colour scheme, but I'm not actually, am I? It's pretty much still working within that, those boundaries. A bit of lighter colour as well. Using a square bracket key. Make my brush a bit smaller. Building a little bit. Control key, pick up a colour, just sort of pop that in there. Just a little bit like that. Got this distant tree here as well. Um, just here. Put that in, perhaps.
Use that blender there. bit of blend in need to think about thick paint soon as well what's this brush freshness wet blend sounds interesting this edge in here I'm really enjoying doing this you know uh, I've already painted this this is the second time I painted it the first time I painted it was um, in actual pastels you know conventional pastels now, I'm breaking the rules a bit now I'm putting a bit of lime green in but you know what? I, I I don't care. I think it works, and I want it. So that's that's my argument for putting that in. Just just a little bit. Just to the sun's catching that a little bit there. Look, maybe there as well. Top of that edge there. Not a lot. Just a, a little bit. And that was what I meant earlier. When I was saying, you know, you might find me playing around with colours uh, that aren't really in that s spectrum. And I've sort of pushed it a little bit farther to the right. So. <clears throat> Oops. I think at this point I need to uh, come into these brushes down here um, like the, the RGBA brushes which give us this thick thick paint look you know uh, like you've got lots of paint on your brush just going through them deciding which one to use I quite like this one That's a, a nice stroke, and uh, this one as well, sort of really thick. So I think I'm going to work with those two. Start with this one, zoom out a bit, and at this point, I'm kind of picking colours off off the uh, off the canvas a little bit, just to put some. Details for strokes in. Should I create a new layer for this overlaying? Let's let's do it. Let's create a new layer for the thick paint, and I can take it out a lot. And I love the way. Um, look, you get sort of one brush stroke, and it puts half a dozen strokes in for you. really um really adds something to it i'm gonna come a little bit darker
keeping the very darkest at the bottom and, and the lighter as we go a little bit higher. There we go, nice and loose. These are sort of trees. I thought they were distant bushes, but when I look at them closer, they're actually trees. So I can um, put a couple of branches in there and, and just change the shape of these slightly. Go too crazy with with dark. Yeah, that's that's nice. Let's go in with this thick paint. In the foreground, I think. Quite cool. And on the on there, that's a bit darker. Um, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it to be like cliched and and um obvious that I'm putting thick paint in the foreground because that's where you're going to get a lot of texture and all of that because there's not that much texture in the road to be honest so that's not quite as much as that that's nice I like this though it's a bit more subtle than uh, the RGBA 04 in pasto is a bit more subtle than the 05 in pasto detail uh, we can use this rock RGBO six rock. Um, if we wanted as well, I don't know if that's a, might steer away from that one on this one. I like the way we, we can sort of almost blend that away. I might be all right just to you know make a smaller brush and take that lime green there we go just sort of uh -huh. It's definitely fun to explore this um, is that a bit oops a bit too much I think scratch scratch some grasses in I'm just messing I'll, I promise I'll I'll sort it out not liking what's going off here let's uh, go back to this brush I love these thick brushes but you've got you've got to use them carefully you know you can't just sort of 
go willy nilly at it like a bullet to gate. I think me the the issue I have here is I've got to be careful with the colour. Um, I'm losing sight of um the colour palette. And also the shape, you know, this sort of uh, put that a bit more like that. That's it. That's a bit better. I thought I got too much sort of grass going off there. Too much thick paint. I'm liking that a bit better now. Some of that darker in here. I'm coming with this brush again, uh, this one, just to put a little bit of sort of texture in there. Because to, to, let's be, be honest, it's just a rectangle, isn't it? That looks a bit messy. Um, I could scratch a few twigs and things in it if I wanted. Uh, yeah, that's better. Uh, go back to me lime green. This brush. What's that? I have to keep reminding myself that the leaves on the trees don't have to be green how are we doing let's have a look looking good i'm liking it let's go back to this uh this brush the number four impasto see if i can get some um bit of texture now. In fact, no, no, no. Let's try resource details. What's that look? What does that do? See, look at that straight away. Just flick, 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 and that to me is now defined that as as a grassy bank, and and that's all that needs. That's worked. That's worked. Sometimes you just have to work through through what you're doing. Don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing there. Oh, uh, we've got to have the sun blinding through the um, trees, haven't we? So. Let's go for, let's try this flat roof. And I'm going to go with a sort of a conventional orange glow, maybe. White in the middle. Yellow. Yeah. So I've sort of kept some colours are either the the sunlight 
what you'd expect but changed many other colors around so you can see we've totally blown the color scheme of the photo out of the water with this quite radical color scheme that i've chosen working with this um palette and i'm i'm liking it i'm liking it uh, something like that do I need to just flick it. I don't know if I need branches in or not that one's uh, oh it's quite nice Maybe. sort of fade them out a bit Now we can bring in the uh, this thicker paint. Maybe. They do seem a bit heavy. I, 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 I love the thick paint, but I think you have to use it very sparingly. Like it works okay on the trunk, it sort of gives that real depth to it. And maybe I could, uh, maybe that's the wrong brush. Maybe this this rock one would be nicer for for the for the gate. Let's zoom in just so I can see the effect as it's. Yeah, like I'm sort of dragging that thick paint across a lot. Notice I'm not putting the cross on. I don't. I don't want that going on. Really. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we're there. If we're out there. Softening off those branches a little bit, bit like and twig things are put in. Let's get rid of them. Those can be softened. I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of that either. There we go. Um, Probably get a bit of rim light sort of dappling through, maybe. Especially around here. Just help us define that tree a bit more. I think we're there i think that will do you know uh quite happy with that let's get it signed so basically um a video on how to uh, take a color palette 
basically split complementary color scheme in, in this case where I took the red from this side and then sort of purples and blue greens so warm blues and cool blues ne next to the reds and chucked a little bit of yellow and lime green in there for good measure just as um what would you call it accents accent colors not every color just 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 to create a little bit of an accent uh, to produce what I think is um, quite a pleasing result. Sort of tweaking that a little bit. And uh, hopefully that's give you food for thought and some ideas to play around with colours a little bit. And, you know, don't think that the uh, sky is blue and the leaves on the trees are green think outside the box man <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing i've got lots of videos like this and i would love to be sharing them all with you so don't forget everybody stay safe stay sane keep painting and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.